Hey everybody, it's Dan Thorne, welcome back to Wolf Tales Red, and the last we left off. Well, depression, some cute things, a lot of depression though, but uh, anyway, yeah, someone doesn't tell her, we feel asleep while you uh, feel with sweet, but that can't talk now, huh? We fell asleep while we were snuggling. Don't you remember for you? We were snuggling on the couch, right up to the moment when you, when you fell asleep. S snuggling? No, no, that's, that's, I, I would never. You must have moved my body while I was sleeping. I did no such thing. In fact, I tried to separate from you, but you wouldn't let me at all. Liar. There's no way I would do something so shameless. This is definitely all you're doing. Actually, Addison was quite careful not to wake you. They haven't moved at all since you two started waiting for dinner together. D dinner? At the mention of that magical word, Fuyu begins to sniff the air. Kung kung. Whatever. I don't know. Oh. Oh, right, of course. That's what it was. I was just hungry and tired, and your lap was warm, so I naturally fell asleep on it. Silly me. Of course, that's what happened. Why else would I be napping in a place like this? In a place like this. It's great to be basically uh, relegated to the, uh, on the same level as, you know, a bed. If that weren't the case, I'd never be caught sleeping on your smelly lap. You don't need to be uh, get so defensive for you. I'm not getting defensive, soon that I soon that I. <laughs> I just don't want you to misunderstand, that's all. Foo you. Foo you finally removes himself from my lap and runs over to the kitchen, lured in by the smell of food. Even after she reached the food, Foo steals a few glances in my direction, then quickly averts her gaze when I catch her. I guess that's my cue. I'll bring dinner over in a minute, a moment. Just a tie, Addison. Having filled our bellies, Mari, Fuyu, and I sit down on the couch once, uh, once again as we ponder what to do with ourselves. After napping earlier in the day, Fuyu and I are still full of energy. Mari, on the other hand, seems like she'll fall asleep at any moment and is hanging on by sheer force of will. Ah, uh, hmm. Really, I'm fine. I'll go to bed when you do. Now it sounds more convincing with it the yawn at the start. Go to bed, Mari. You're not going to miss anything. I don't... Uh, I feel tired. I don't... I don't want to miss out. You're a terrible liar. Eh, fine. Stay up for all I care. I was going to watch some old VHS tapes anyway. VHS? What is this? I've never heard of that before. Yeah, most people under 20 haven't. <laughs> that and floppy disks and so on and so forth. God, I'm reacting to do fucking uh, assignments back in school. Uh, like in... Uh, like an elementary school with uh, floppy disks on computers, like saving files them and whatever. Low budget computer classes. It's a way for a human to watch movies and TV shows whenever they want. Yeah, it's a bit dated now, but they still work as long as you had the right equipment. Movies and TV? For you, do you understand what Addison's talking about? It's probably witchcraft, but we got, we got a burner. Burn the human. Cleanse the cabin. Um, I think you've heard of. TV. That's the magic box with pictures, isn't it? You're not wrong, but do you girls seriously not know what television is? How could you be, how could you be familiar with canned food and running water but not television? Well, don't they usually live in the wild? Mm, even if you ask that. But what does television do that's so special? Running water and canned food provide us with sustenance. Why do we need television? Because we're bored. And it's, it helps fill the vacancy in our lives, the the ever-present ennui threatening to eat us out from inside, black holes of our existence to do or something. <sighs> um, um, yeah. You actually have a point there. No, I just told you what it, what it was. Television has a couple of uses, but it's mostly for entertainment. I pull out a box filled with VHS tapes and place it in front of the two wolf girls. Inside of the box are dust with tape, still in the original cases, cover art and all. These are VHS? That's right. Pick one you like the look of and we'll see what's on it. Okay. Murray and Fuyu start looking at the box of old tapes. After searching for a few seconds, they each pull out a single tape. Let's see what you got there. A documentary about animals of the grasslands? Yes, I'm quite curious to see how those in other climates thrive. I suppose you would be if you lived in the in this snow your entire life. What about you, for you? Hmm. Oh. Awoo, oh, what's this? Fuck off. Awoo, oh, what's this? I'm not sure if I want to watch it, but the cover did catch my eye. It's okay. Show me what you've... 
I almost gagged on my own saliva as I gazed on the tape in Fuyu's hand. On the cover is a young, blonde woman with a large chest dressed in nothing but his revealing swimsuit. Unlike the Grasslands documentary, which is still in its original plastic sleeve, this video has been viewed so many times the tape is, been, is beginning to wear out. Oh? What manner of VHS is that? Are we gonna view that next? No, no I, I mean, uh... This one would bore the two of you to death. It's not the kind of thing you'd be interested in. Is it like Baywatch, or is it porn? Really? I did get the feeling I wouldn't like it. So it's a boring one after all, huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> quite, quite boring. <laughs> I'll just put it back in the box, way at the bottom, so we don't wind up picking out again. It's porn. Huh. I read the sigh of relief as the two wolf girls allow my slip up the path without a fight. They're gonna come dig it up later, aren't they? Looks like I'll need to be careful, more careful of that stuff as long as these two are here. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's easy I've been able to do things at my own pace till now, but I can't be so careless and guess are over. Rather than dwell on Fuyu's discovery, I hurriedly cram Murray's choice into the VHS player. After skipping the ads, anti-piracy warnings, that they're outdated- Oh god, I remember that. Oh. E even, even from fucking DVDs too, Jesus. Becoming attractions on DVDs, which would always be eventually sorely outdated and remind you just how old you've gotten and how much time has passed and how much, how little left is in your <laughs> Moving on. Um, I saw the movie where the film and the crew are just beginning to set up. The first few minutes of the film explain how the crew are looking for specific animals during today's outing and, then, and have the uh, plan to observe each one. Whether they'll succeed or not is yet to be seen. All they promise is not to hurt the animals and to view them from afar. Oh, look at that! The water's flowing in a perfectly straight line without any chunks of ice flowing in it at all. And the grass! It's everywhere! There isn't a single patch of snow to be seen. You're right, princess. This is truly fascinating. Yeah, sure. With ready access to unfrozen water, do the animals living in those parts shrink their fill and bathe whenever they feel the urge? I imagine they must. Why else would they... Oh, look for you! The rabbit's drinking from the river! I see it, princess. But where else has fur gone? It'll never survive the winter like that. You're the last person who should be asking that. Especially, you know. I smile wryly as the two girls excitedly point towards the television. Even Fuyu, who generally attempts to feign disinterest in such things, is clearly enjoying herself. So far, we're moving into resounding success. Huh? And where do the animals go? Why are they only showing humans now? Oh. Uh, it looks like they're taking a break and discussing how they're going to track on the next animal. Boring. I agree, actually. I don't. I find this fascinating. The humans are all huddling together to hold a strategy meeting, just like we would. And I think the people you're watching might claim that you're, uh, might claim that you had that backwards. Oh look, a human city. Ugh, even further away from the grasslands now. Ah, uh, they're going back to the city to talk with some expert. My, that building is enormous. Are most human buildings as big as that? Well, the number of people. I've never seen so many human beings before now. How nice it must be to live there. With one eye still go to the television, Mario tries to pull on my trousers. Um, huh. I mean, I don't think it would hurt to entertain her, right? I don't. And this seems like it'd be more like ignoring her, though. It's just, that's, okay, that's, that's what I'm worried. That, that's the vibe I'm getting. Is this might be like just ignoring her because apparently she's trying to get my attention. So the city's convenient, but it's not that great to actually live there. Addison, you grew up in a city like that. Are oh, you grew up in a city like that? T uh, inflection was wrong. Yeah, kinda. Maybe not quite as busy as that one though. What was it like? Tell me, tell me. Nah. Hey, princess, look, they've gone up to the grass area now. <laughs> no, don't pay attention to the human. No, no, no. They're cute animals and everything. Fuyu tries unsuccessfully to grab Mirai's attention. And the video has moved away from human civilization, Mirai's focus is solely on yours truly. Fine. <laughs> Fuyu? <laughs> and how Fuyu mimics my actions from earlier and clumsily mashes the remote control until she succeeds in turning the television off. Fuyu, what's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> Fuyu passes Mirai and finally glances towards her. Sitting what's going on, I decide to put uh, Fuyu out of her misery. I suppose it is getting rather late. We can continue watching the video some of the time. But now let's all go to bed. Aww. 
but I wanted to talk about human civilization. Uh, oh, good idea, human. Or rather, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Come here, princess. Uh, let us go to sleep. Hmm. Okay, then. If you insist. Good night, Edison. Good night, Marari. Who are you? Good night. <clears throat> Without further complaint, Marari curls up on the couch alongside Fuyu. Fuyu soon, jo uh, soon, soon joins soon joins her and snuggles up close, as if making her up for the dissonance mo moments ago. Yeah. Content to leave the duo just like that, I retreat to my bedroom and head to bed myself. Having nap for a while yesterday evening, I wake up earlier than, than I wake up earlier than usual this morning. Long before my large and necessary alarm clock wake me up, I rise from my bed and begin to stretch. Unfortunately, even though I've awoken early, there's no reason for me to be awake at such a time. It isn't yet warm enough to work, and there are no time sensitive activities in my list of things to do. All I've done is deny myself a sleep in. <sighs> I guess I'll go check on the girls. Maybe they have something they want. Uh, maybe they have some, something they want to do this morning. I walk into the living room, half expecting to see Marari cooking and Fuyu sitting on the floor behind her impatiently. Surprisingly, however... Daybreak. Hmm. The two wolf girls are yet to, be, are yet to awaken. Huh. Let's look, on, let's look on the first one up. I guess they're too comfortable to move away, uh, to move the way they are now. Watching over the two for a moment, you know, not creepy at all, a smile naturally begins to creep onto my face. There's the word creep again. Murray and Fuyu snuggle together, sharing one another's body warmth, resting on the other's fur, and generally finding pleasure in being with the other. If not for the cuteness of the reaction, I'd probably be jealous. What am I thinking? There's nothing to be jealous of. In fact, I should be thinking of ways to get rid of them oh, even one day sooner. It's for their sake and mine that we go our separate ways as soon as possible. Everyone knows that humans and half-humans aren't supposed to get involved involved with, uh, with one another. Bip, 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 words. We're too different. Having one side, uh, one try to integrate into, into society, and having one try to integrate into the society of the other will only result in pain for both sides. Over the years, many cautionary tales have been told regarding humans and half humans getting along. Humans feeding starving half humans, only to then become their dessert. What? <laughs> half humans seeking refuge in human homes and then ultimately slaughtering the families, and then and stealing their shelter. Okay, but how many of those are true? And even if any of them are, what are the... Uh, are there any, like, um... Uh, 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 what's the word? Fuck. Um, any extenuating circumstances? Sure, I think that's close enough. There have been cases of mass killings on both sides, starting with nothing more than subtle differences in the way of life. Oh, really? Is that what causes massacres? Well, in a, okay, in a very, very, that's, that's kind of hard to say without sounding, uh, hmm, I mean, skin deep differences, you know, are always end up leading into way more than they're worth, you know, people love to hate things that are different, so there you go. In, different, in hindsight, I've taken on a pretty sub uh, substantial risk by letting a half-wolf, a member of one of the most aggressive and bestial races into my home. And that being said, looking at these two right now, it's pretty hard to imagine either one of them turning on me. Hell, Marari acts more human than most people I've ever known, and she certainly knows a way around the kitchen better than I do. Speaking of which... Prying myself away from the adorable side, I walk into the storeroom and search for something easy to cook for breakfast. When I start to pry it around in the storeroom, however, I quickly realize something important. Oh man, uh, where will the food go? I thought I had enough to last till summer. I know to eat a lot more than I do, but we shouldn't have gone through that much food already. Perplexed, I scratch my head. It's possible that Marari may have moved the rest of the supplies when she was cleaning up, but without knowing where she moved them to, that thought uh, does me a little good. I guess I'll go make a trip into town after all. I was hoping to put this off until summer, but in a way, this might be for the best. A more up-to-date map would be helpful, after all, and I do need to gather information about the re recent changes to changes to, to the terrain. And off to town I go, then. Without dialing any further, I grab my keys and head to the side of the house. I then jump into my trunk, turn the key, and start to rev up the engine. Ah, oh, 
come on, you stupid thing. It hasn't been that long since I last drove you. I continued to rev the engine in an attempt to warm the truck up. Unfortunately, my efforts seemed to result in nothing but an increased level of noise. Come on, you good for nothing. Grrr. Huh? Um. Uh huh? Okay, barking, whining, more barking. Just stay away from the princess, you. The hell? I turned to look towards the house only to find that I've woken my guests. Rather than address me personally, however, the two girls seem to be fixated on my truck. For you look, it has Addison. It does too. Give her back, beast. I'll cut you open my claws if I have to. But be careful, for you. We don't know what to keep below. Don't worry, princess. I've got this. Fuyu slowly approaches. Her hair is standing on end, and her claws are ready at by her sides, and her teeth are bared. Uh, I'll help too. We're coming for you, Addison. Frying pan. Right behind, and Murray steps forward warily. Home to the frying pan from the kitchen, Murray looks like a frightened housewife rather than a wolf. Nonetheless, she comes forth bravely, ready to fight my truck for the sake of bringing the person trapped within. Girls, please stop that. I'm sorry I scared you, but I'm fine. Really. And Fui, you've seen my truck before, remember? Mm. I can still hear the, hear the human speak from within its belly. Addison must still be okay. Yeah, I've been out for long. We need to get out of there before the beast finishes digesting her. How do we do that? Do you know how to fight this thing? No. By the way, there's no, it's no different than any other beast. Tear it start up with your teeth and it'll die. Tear it I couldn't possibly. Don't worry, Princess, I'll do it. No, don't you do it either. Just get back out of the cabin, okay? There's something of junk and nothing for you to get worked up about. For you? Don't listen to it, Princess. The beast is mimicking Addison's voice that so will let our guard down. It, it, it's, it's not a one to go, okay? As soon as we turn our back, it'll bounce. Heep. Oh, for the love of... Before Fuyu can scratch the paint on my truck, I turn the engine off and hop out. Look, I keep telling you, I'm fu- Whoa! Addison! Oh, thank goodness you're alright. I was so scared. I heard a ferocious rumbling the moment I woke up. When I came out- When I came out to see what it was, the beast had already eaten you whole. I thought we were too late and that you- That you- Oh. I exhale deeply and place my hand on Mori's head. There, there, it's alright. Oh, what's Fuyu doing right now, though? Is she destroying the truck? This thing is nothing uh, to be worried about. But Addison... Grr. Ha! Prod. Um, is it truly dead? With Mori covering behind me, I watch on in amazement as Fuyu continues to cautiously poke my truck with her claws. Fuyu, you, you, you don't need to do that. It's a machine. Just like the kettle of the television. It's not gonna hurt you. Is it? Or, yeah, okay. Huh, like I believe that. This creature's already devoured you whole once. If it isn't dead, then what is uh, to stop it from doing so again? I scratch my head in confusion as I try to think of a way to explain to you how vehicles work. Given her reaction to the noise and commotion that's generated so far, however, that may be easier said than done. <sighs> Forget it. You know what? I tamed it. I tamed the beast. It's under my control now. You won't harm anyone ever again. Oh. I, I see. Amazing! I suspected of Addison. No, no, not as What? Okay. Your opinion of me is high. It's way higher than it should be. You wouldn't accept this as a machine, but they bought that explanation straight away? I get grief. I'm already far more exhausted than I should be, given the time of day. I sigh once more and walk the girls back inside. Right. And on that note, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next episode.